How are you guys doing? Today we're going to be building this YouTube Insider. I don't know how to call it exactly, but it basically does this. You inform it a niche. So let's say uh, my niche is travel. So let's suppose you're a traveler YouTuber and you need to create content. So you don't know like what's trending, right? You could go to many sites. You could go to Google Trends and find, what, find what's trending there. You could go to YouTube and manually search through YouTube to find those insights, or you could use this tool right here. And the intention of this tool is not that you're just going to use this tool and that's it. It's for you to actually improve and maybe even learn some tips that you can use to create your own workflow that uses YouTube. And this is what I got back based on the latest search results, uh, blah, 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 like this, just um, some AI gabberish, diverse travel destinations. And then it, it mentions a YouTube video that received 19,000 views. This scrapes YouTube videos from the past 48 hours. And so 19,000 views is kind of relevant, is kind of trending. So it picked up on that and mentioned it right here. Uh, down here, it does give some, some of the links. Let's click this. <laughs> Are we really in China? And this is the video that got 19,000 views, but this really works for anyone for any niche. So if I place down, let's give it another test. Uh, my niche is AI automations, right? Uh, this will work for you even if you never coded one day in your life, simply because you can get this exact workflow, which I will provide free below in the comment section, uh, not the descriptions. I don't really know if that triggers the algorithm or not, but I'm just going to place it in the comments for now. Yeah, this is what it got in and at scale. This is a video from NAN, I believe. Yeah, it's a video oh. from NAN. Okay. And then it got other videos. I believe this video right here is from Nate. Did I get it right? Hey guys, today we're going to yeah, be going over this framework. Nate. And like this, this is a great YouTube channel, guys. AI automation from Nate Herc. I, I believe I've watched every single video. I'm just not subscribed here because this channel is just a dummy test uh, email. So yeah, let's get straight to it. Let's get on how I did this. The main focus here is on this workflow of get YouTube videos. So it's just this, but uh, it has a specific node that people don't take advantage of. And that's the HTTP node. The common NAN user that probably has a background in marketing or sales, they will basically come here and type YouTube and then they'll, they'll see that you, you get a, a bunch of these nodes right here. But none of the, these nodes, at least not at the date that I'm recording this, has a way to get these features right here, which are content details, snippets, statistics. These are all for the videos. And these details are important if you want to build something for YouTube, right? Let's just go straight and see how this exact workflow works. So I have the main workflow trigger right here, which I pinned with digital marketing. I'll hit the test workflow. You see that it looped only two times here, um, despite it having like it retrieving three items from the get videos. And why is that beyond here? It'll know if the video has less than three minutes and 30 seconds. And then there's just a code right here. Again, you can just copy this and this code will identify if the video has more than that. And if it does, okay, true group, the data, uh, format it into this, this, uh, structure right here, format the code using the set node, and then send that to the memory in the memory. We're using the get workflow static data. This get flow static data from NAN, you can find this in its documentation. It's basically a way for you to hold state variables inside the same instance of workflow, right? Every iteration, every time the workflow starts again, it will start fresh and then you can store data in there. And why do I use that? That's used because at least not of my knowledge, but when you get to the done part right here, how do you retrieve all the data that was looped in, right? For the moment, if you don't use this, I believe that you'll have to do something with that data in every iteration of the loop, but I don't want to do anything with the data that isn't really separating the data and removing the shorts video. And so at this point right here, all I want is to retrieve everything that was stored in this get flow static data. And that is what I'm doing right here. You can see that the output is exactly this response. If you're watching this in the future, maybe this has changed. Maybe this response will be replaced by uh, the AI LLM agent, just understanding which response was retrieved from the tool. And I'll show you this just in a second. 
here you go. When you build this tool, you see that the field to return has to be response. If you don't provide this, then it won't understand like where's the response, right? So I stringify the response and get it back to this tool right here. Now here in the AI agent, what does this have? This has medium sized prompt that just specifies what it needs to do, right? So the first thing it should do is just understand, okay, what's the niche of this person? The person can be talking to the AI agent and just inform it that it wants to create a YouTube channel. Maybe it hasn't created a YouTube channel before. And then it talks about, uh, uh, clothes and what it eats and, and these type of stuff. And then the AI should understand, okay, this person might align with lifestyle, right? Lifestyle is like the niche. So let's search for lifestyle. And from lifestyle, you have different ways of searching for that. So let's just, let's just make that example right here. My niche is lifestyle. And let's see how it's processing this exactly. Okay. It's using, like it already used the, the tool and how did it use it? It used the query with a search term of lifestyle tips. Okay, that's one way to search it. Then lifestyle vlogs. And then finally, daily lifestyle routines. So it's separated into three different queries. And then we get this response right here. Daily routines and self-care, travel and exploration. And then uh, probably it'll give us the links, right? And the way it, the way it understands how it should provide the links is also specified here in the prompt, right? So all you need to do is get the video ID and place it inside the string. And if you want to show the channels link, then get the channel ID and place it inside this type of link. And then the rest of it is just kind of instructing it on how it should understand the patterns and identify what's actually trending. Like if you're a content creator, if you're a marketer, you'll understand like this has a lot to be improved. Maybe you can only search your competition, right? You can name a few channels and then just retrieve videos from those specific channels because you know you're better aligned with those specific channels. And then you can just play along with this. So you can come over here and type in cron. There's a schedule trigger and you could set up like, okay, every day at 7 a.m. when I wake up, you should tell me like what trended in the past day, like what was trending in the past day. And then you hook this up in evolution, which will send you a message in WhatsApp and inform you every single day of what is the trending topic for your specific niche. So again, if you want me to be more specific into these workflows and actually build them node by node in these videos, then please let me know in the comments as well as any other suggestions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then.